put this bill but, and then has proceeded to give a list of reasons why it really isn't a very good bill. And I'm afraid my, my noble friend, Lady Bennett, uh, suggested I was going to go into detail, but until um, this debate started, I thought I was going to follow the noble Lord Lord Seeker, who has written an excellent 11-page briefing on the bill with three and a half pages which um, outline all the problems with it. And I, I would recommend that the noble Lord Minister takes my copy afterwards and does something over the weekend um, to, to brush the bill up a little bit. Um, it, um, it's, been, um, it, it's been very stressful the past two weeks, um, even being on the sidelines of watching a European war. And this seems to be the least we can do to actually fight part of that war for the Ukraine. And we all know that global capitalism is out of control, at least we really ought to know that by now, and the mega-rich have been able to abuse their power and their wealth for far too long through uh, investor visas, complex trusts and corporate structures, political donations, more of that in a moment, uh, private schools, aggressive tax avoidance and legal tax loopholes. The mega-rich are actually able to pick and choose whether they obey the same rules and obligations the rest of us have to do. And it seems to me that we really need to get to grips with this. Governments all around the world allow them to get away with it. And worse, they lay out the red carpet and actually cut the red tape to try to attract them. We are told that cracking down on such people will just create unintended consequences and force them to flee to other countries. Well, we can hope. And these problems have been obvious for a long time. And this government has ignored those problems for 12 years in office. So while I also welcome measures in this bill and accept it's urgent, because of course it's been urgent for quite a number of years, um, the government has to face the shameful fact that they've dithered and delayed until they've been forced to act by an illegal war. When a hardline version of Brexit was pushed through in, through Parliament in 2020. And remember, I voted for Brexit. I didn't realise any government could mess it up to this extent. We had 14 ministers at that time in Boris Johnson's government who had received donations from individuals or companies linked to Russia. Is, it that, a, is that the reason why this economic crime bill is so late and the measures in it so limited? And do the £3.5 million in Russian donations in the decade following 2010 explain why we have ignored Russian interference in our politics, why our intelligence services weren't allowed to dig deep into the network of rich Russians and Conservative Party politicians, or why Parliament failed to push forward with the concerns brought to light by the Russia report? And I asked... I think last week, time goes so strangely here, I think it was last week, what do Russian donors to the Conservative Party get for their money? I mean, this is a question that the whole country would like to know the answer to. Is it that money stopping the government putting sanctions on large numbers of rich people who are close to Putin? Do the donations explain why we have fewer sanctions on Russia <coughs> than the EU or Canada or even Switzerland? There are only just over 300 UK sanctions against Russia, 35 of which have been introduced since tw the 22nd of February. Before that, so few. And by comparison, the US has sanctioned almost 1,200 individuals and companies, a fifth of which have been introduced in the last two weeks. So London is still a playground for oligarchs, for oil barons, and outright financial fraudsters. And, as has been said, it's not just Russians. There are unsavoury elites from almost every country on earth. And this new legislation has got to be used against all illegitimate, dubious members of the global elite and not simply a political tool against whoever we think our enemies are at that particular point. And there's got to be a constant tightening of the laws that constrain the mega-rich. The government can't be allowed to rest on this singular piece of legislation or this double piece of legislation and say that we did it. I do regret there's no sort of sunset clause so that we do um, actually look um, a little uh, beyond this. It definitely, definitely needs better writing. And I would say that this bill can only be a starting point 
and the upcoming Queen's speech must include a raft of legislation to take these issues forward further and faster than many Tory voter, voters or backbenchers might feel comfortable with. We really have to do more, and this bill is only the start. And the noble lords this evening who've explained where we should be going really have to be listened to.